Hello everybody. So in today's video, we will be talking about source transformation. Source transformation is the process of replacing a voltage source in series with a resistor by a current source in parallel with a resistor. So we have the circuit right here, and then using the principle of source transformation, this is what we're going to get. So we have a current source that is in parallel with this resistor and I'm going to label this R and then label this R as well. And then we want to label this as IS. So we have VS and R initially and then we've transformed to get what our equivalent IS would be. And that, to find what the value of IS, what we do is we got our two given values for each component. And what we're going to do is we're going to take Vs divided by R, and that would be what our Is is. And I've stated before that the source transformation also works in the other way around. So if we were already given this circuit right here with the current source in parallel with the resistor, but we want to transform it to find what our voltage source will be, then what we do is we take the current source multiplied by R, and that we will get what our Vs is, what our value of the Vs is going to be. And now I'm going to this time make a numerical example. So say that we got our current source. like this and then let's say it's 3 amps and then the resistor value is 2 ohms and then the question is what is Vs going to be? Vs we can draw it it's going to be 6 volts because we take the equation Is times R, and we take Is, which is 3 amps, resistor, which is 2 ohms, and then 3 times 2, that will be 6 volts. And then the resistor is going to be 2 ohms. And that is what our uh, circuit would look like when we used source transformation to get from our current source to our voltage source. So what we have right here is a question. And the question asks us, asks us, find the output current I0 using source transformation. So in the circuit, we can say that, well, there's two methods in finding I0. We can use nodal analysis. Looks pretty complicated. I mean, we got these current sources right here. And if we do mesh analysis, that looks somewhat complicated as well. And now, this is the reason why we have source transformation in place. So first, let's look at our dependence. Uh, look at our independent sources. So we have three independent sources, and we can identify that two of the independent sources, uh, this one amp current source right here, and this three amp current source, is in parallel with a another with a resistor. So what we can do using the knowledge of source transformation is that we're going to estimate that if we translate these current source into voltage source, then it would be easier to find uh, what our current, our output current would be. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have this one amp right here, and that is in parallel with this 5 ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 1 amps by 5 ohms and we get our uh, voltage source which is 5 volts and that would be in series with this 5 ohms and then we're going to have keep these K 
keep this two ohms right here, keep the two volts here, and then we're gonna keep this five ohms right here because uh, we don't want to change this because that's where our output current is. And then we're gonna multiply three amps by one ohm to find our voltage source. And this would be the ground. This is very, very important. So now it seems like we can use nodal analysis because we've gotten rid of our uh, current source uh, in our uh, previous diagram. Now we're already given these voltage sources right here and it seem, the answer seems measurable to find. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, label all the currents that are entering and leaving the node voltages. So we have two node voltages, V1 right here and V2 right here, and then we got current flowing into V1, current flowing out of V1, current the output current flowing out of V2, and this branch where we have the current flowing into V2. Now, we can't solve for the currents yet. We also have to identify that this is a super node. And if you guys haven't checked out my previous video about super node, then I highly recommend you guys checking it out. And essentially, we uh, make this these two node voltages as one combination of a single node, and we call that super node because we have a voltage source in between uh, these two. And because of that, we can't use KCL directly to find our unknown elements. And that is why we have this super node to come up with a, uh, an, uh, another equation to find what our unknown elements are going to be. So this would be our entire node. And then we can apply KCL uh, through four of these uh, currents. So starting from uh, the left side, we will have all the currents that are flowing into the node voltage, and that would be uh, this one. And this current would be depicted as five volts uh, subtracted by V1 divided by five. And then this current flows from three volts to V2. So that would be three minus V2 divided by one. And then this current flows from V1 to the ground. So that would be V1 minus zero divided by two. And then this output current will be flowing from V2 to the, gr to the ground. That would be V2 minus zero divided by five. And that is our first equation for our KCL equation. And then we have our super node equation. And that super node equation would be V2 is equal to V1 plus two. And plus two is on the V1 side because V1 is uh, facing the negative polarity of the voltage source. So memorize that when you come up with a super node equation. So yeah, utilizing the knowledge of source transformation, uh, we can now find what our uh, V1 to find what our V2 value is. And then once we take our V2 value, we can find what our uh, output current is going to be. So let's do that, shall we? So first, let's factor out the denominator in equation one. So that would be, we would uh, essentially just multiply both sides by five. And what we get is five minus V1 plus 15 minus five V2 is equal to 2.5 V1 plus V2. And now we can um, put V1 on the right side and put V2 on the left side and then put the constants as well on the right side to find what our uh, V2 is going to be. So what we get is we get minus six V2 3.5 V1 minus 20. So now we have uh, equation two right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this two on uh, 
to the left side. So what we have is we have uh, v1 now is equal to by itself v2 minus 2. So v1 is equal to uh, v2 minus 2. So now we can sub in this equation into uh, our second equation originally. And that second equation would look like this. And then we'll expand this And then I'm going to write it down right here just to clarify. And then we're going to put V2 on the left side. And then V2 is going to be equal to 2.84 volts. So V2 is equal to 2.84 volts. Thus, I not. Uh, we know I naught is V2 minus 0 divided by 5. And then I naught is simply going to be 2.84 divided by 5. And that would be equal to 0 0.56 amps. So I naught is equal to 0 0.56 amps. We've got our answer. We've determined it through the knowledge of source transformation. So this is it. This is the concept of how it works. Pretty, pretty simple. And I hope you guys learned something from this video and I will see you guys in the near future. Okay guys, so there are two other videos that you might haven't watched yet, but are related to the entirety of uh, this section on circuit theorems. So I recommend you guys checking it out.